How are you, Ben? Very well, yes. It's welcome to see. my den. It's a bit of a tip, but you're very welcome. Very busy. Vince Cable, great to meet you. And you too. It's five minutes, Vince, so I know you're a politician, but you've got to keep your answers short. I'll try. Are you ready? Yep. Time starts now. It was roughly a year ago that you came out with the famous line that Gordon Brown had gone from Stalin to Mr Bean when you were acting leader of the Lib Dems. Who is he now? Well, he's, I don't think he's any longer Mr Bean. He's got his act together. I think he's overstating his achievements, but he's no longer on the floor. He's no longer a figure of ridicule. I'll give him that. Now, you were 64 when you were acting leader. You didn't go for it in the long term. What does it say about society or politics that age seems to be a factor in that? Well, it shouldn't be. I mean, we've just had somebody who was six years older than me standing for the President of the United States and not getting far from it. And I'd like to see that here. I don't think age should be an issue. You started off as a Labour man. You worked for John Smith, the late John Smith, before he became Labour leader. You did suggest before the last election in 2005 that the Lib Dems could work in the coalition government with the Tories. Who would you like to work with next time round if there's a hung parliament and the polls are tightening? David Cameron or Gordon Brown? I'm, I'm not tribal, and I don't see problems working with people from other parties on either side. We're not leading as Liberal Democrats in one direction or the other, but I think particularly at a time of national emergency, which is frankly what we are now, I think people will expect to see parties working together. Who do you like more or respect more, Gordon Brown or David Cameron? Well, David Cameron's got to prove himself. He's a new guy, hasn't had responsibilities of government, he's charming, intelligent, good-looking, um, but he's, he's got to prove himself. Gordon Brown, on the other hand, is, you know, he's been through the battles. Uh, he's come up from the floor where he was six months ago, and, yeah, I think one has to respect him. Now, you've been described as the holy grail of economic comment. Mm. You're the go-to man for a lot of people on the economy. Under any circumstances, would you accept a role in government? No, I'm not interested in being bought off by this government or any other government. I'm a party man. I'm here because I'm a Liberal Democrat. And we will work, we'll work as a team. I'm, I'm not going off as an individual. Just over three minutes ago, if you were Chancellor for the day, Vince, what one thing would you do to try and breathe some life back into the economy? The one thing we've got to get a grip on is what's happening in the banking system. It's absolutely disastrous at the moment. You know, Banking is collapsing. People, Banks are pulling their loans on businesses, causing tens of thousands of people to lose their jobs. So the first thing the Chancellor's got to do is to stop that. £37 billion of taxpayers' money has gone into the banks, plus all the guarantees. The government should now be making absolutely sure that those banks push out credit into the economy. That's the top priority. Is it inevitable, Vince, that we're heading for a long recession, or can we get out of it pretty quickly? It's not inevitable, but the situation is very, very serious. We're going to have a very nasty downturn. Uh, I hope we recover, but I, there are all kind of drags on the economy, and I, I worry seriously about it. How has the credit crunch or the recession actually affected you, Vince? Have you cut back on spending? Have, has it affected you in any bad way? Well, not in any bad way. I mean, I'm fortunate. Uh, my mortgage is paid off. My kids have gone off and done other things in life. I'm not supporting a family, and I'm comfortable. I'm not rich, but I'm not uncomfortable. And, you know, and I am watching the pennies a bit, and I don't fly abroad so much, don't travel so much, and I'm a bit more careful, but I can't claim I'm being hurt. Strictly Come Dancing has hit the headlines again. John Sargent pulled out, of course. You're pretty good ballroom dancer yourself. You danced with last year's winner, Alicia Dixon. How mm. did you get into that? I got into it because my late wife, Olympia, and I took, took this up when our kids had grown up. We wanted to do things together, so we went to dancing school, enjoyed it, started doing examinations. Um, when she died of cancer, I, you know, I was a bit lost and, and really I wanted things to plunge myself into so I took up dancing again with uh, with my old teacher and we've done a lot of exams together so and it's great it's great mentally great physically fantasy now perhaps which would you rather win the Strictly Come Dancing or be chanced with the Exchequer that's an impossible dilemma you know I'd, I'd, just, I'd love to do both <laughs> what's your biggest ambition uh, I think my biggest ambition is to do what I'm doing at the moment and doing it well. Uh, you know, it's a critical situation. The economy is top of people's agenda. And I am being listened to to some degree, and I want to do that well, and I want to help. Just under a minute ago, what's your biggest regret, Vince? I don't have too many regrets. I've got a very happy private life. I've got a very settled family. I've got a fantastic job as an MP and in my role in Parliament. I've got good hobbies, dancing, uh, cycling, ride a, ride a horse occasionally. I don't, yeah, I've been, but I'm not a great canoeist. And I love walking, so I'm, I'm very happy. I've got a settled life, and, I, and I'm contented with it. Does anything frighten you or scare you? Um, yes, I, I'm not great with heights. 
<laughs> I'm not, uh, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not easily scared. Who yeah. does the washing up in the cable household? Uh, I do my share. I'm a reasonable new man. I certainly do the washing, and I occasionally do the washing up. I've got a very supportive wife, Rachel. When I'm under pressure, she does a lot of these things, but I'm not afraid to. Do you prefer to eat out or get a takeaway? I prefer eating out. I, you know, it's a luxury. A good Indian restaurant, a good Italian restaurant. That's I regard that as a real treat. Time is up. Great to meet you, Vince. Thanks.